Good morning, folks. A lot of buzz about the shutdown buoy due to the death of the project leader. This came from the Malaysian government, regards the buoy at Cedapan Island, and is not the same buoy of concern for us. Here is Cedapan Island, and for those who watch buoy data, you might say, hey, there's no buoy there. Well, not on our maps anyway, but there is a non-integrated buoy at that location. The two closest ones on the NDBC map are our buoy of concern down here, owned by Australia, and another up to the right off the Philippine coast, owned by the USA. Here you can see my cursor over our buoy of concern. We all know we've had more than a 2,000 foot rise in the seafloor at this buoy. It's brand new this year, was likely put in the middle of that cluster rather than spread out because there is high activity there. Well, you know that our buoy of concern was shut down a few days ago during another seafloor rise event. But this buoy has been shut off as well. The other closest buoy to the Sea of Pan event shut off eight days ago, but with no strange readings. Time to bombard the Australian Meteorological Service about buoy 53046. Let's do it, folks, and it's not an error. Don't accept that. In Oklahoma, a dust storm was so bad it caused a pileup they had ridiculous difficulty cleaning up. Hundreds of dead birds are washing up near the Great Lakes, and northern Columbia saw a mid-sized tremor on the southwest Caribbean plate. The big low in the North Atlantic is Raphael remnants. The backside will suck down Arctic air, but for now, enjoy the eastern side of the cyclonic movement yanking some warmer air over Europe. Tropical storms are virtually non-existent on Earth right now. Maria is fading, and the new low has been patient in making a move. New South Wales recorded the hottest October day in decades. Across the country, a major cold front is sweeping in from the southwest at the pressure convergence. New Zealand already stuck in the Antarctic low, and the unseasonably wintry weather rolls on for the southern connection of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Precipitation records from yesterday in the U.S., pretty much in the Jersey area and surrounding. You can see the spinning low sweeping across. We got some cooler, drier weather on the way by behind it. ACE caught a proton spike around 6 o'clock UTC, up over 100. Could be an error, who knows. But long before that, the induction magnetometer was already responding to moderate density after the coronal hole stream left a deficit of particles in its wake, and the ambient solar wind came up behind, buffeting our weakened shields. Luckily, the BZ is holding. There is no solar plasma penetration. The F1 layer is not as juiced as yesterday, but still higher than we'd like to see it. Ladies and gents, a sunspot crested the eastern limb and didn't immediately decay. 11596 is properly labeled beta gamma. It's got both polarities without clear separation that would allow grouping of the light polarities within one continuous line. Despite its maintaining form, it stopped popping flares and while we await more coronal hole streams, look at the activity just behind the limb. Time after time, active regions go quiet when they catch Earth in their periphery, only to hold their breaths and unleash after cresting the western limb. One of the great mysteries of this solar cycle indeed. Mercury heliocentrically opposes Venus in 24 hours. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.